In this tutorial, we'll introduce the concept of momentum. You'll find momentum is a lot like Newton's laws. In fact, they're based on the same principles. So what exactly is momentum? Well, to start off with, momentum is the product of mass and velocity. And so it can be written as P equals MV, with the P representing our momentum, which may seem confusing, but we already used m for mass, so we don't want to confuse it by calling momentum m as well. And an old Latin term related to impetus was used for momentum and, well, it led to the use of p for momentum in our day and age. Now, to visualize what momentum really is, we could say that momentum is how hard it is to stop an object. So if we think about that, would you rather be stopping a go-kart that was just rolling along a little bit? or a car, or how about a big truck? So mass definitely makes a difference on how hard it is to stop an object. So mass makes a big difference in momentum. Now also, what if the cart were buzzing along and going quite fast down the road and you were asked to stop it? Well, suddenly that becomes a lot more difficult. And so velocity also impacts momentum, or how difficult it is to get something to stop. If we want to look at kind of an extreme example of momentum, we could look at something with huge mass that goes along at a constant velocity, something like an oil tanker, just so huge. And so that is something that's incredibly difficult to stop. And in fact, it can take 15 minutes of full reverse to actually get an oil tanker to come to a stop. Similar with a train, a fully loaded train takes forever and ever. You are not going to stop a train quickly. So mass and velocity both have a big impact on how difficult it is to get something to come to a stop. And so for, therefore, it's related to what we call momentum. Now, in our discussion about momentum, none of this should be too surprising to you in that we can relate it to Newton's laws. We know that F net equals MA. And so if we rearrange that, the acceleration is our F divided by our M. And so to get a large mass to slow down or decelerate, you need a large force. So it's the same idea. So why do we need the concept of momentum then, if we can look at it in the same way with Newton's laws? Well, let's take a look. In dynamics, using Newton's laws, we focused on the forces themselves and how they caused acceleration to masses. Now, in momentum, we look at interactions and we skip over all the internal forces themselves and jump right to the changes in the velocity of those masses. So let's take a car collision as an example here. Now, if we were using Newton's laws, we would accept that the cars would cause equal and opposite forces on each other. Newton's third law. Also, the resulting acceleration on each of the cars would be proportional to their mass. With acceleration being the change in velocity over time, and the time of the collision being the same for each car, we cancel these out and we're left with momentum. So what if we just consider the situation before the crash and compare it to the situation after the crash and skip all the forces in between? That's the power of momentum. We can look at the resulting velocities on various masses before and after an explosion or collision and skip all those details in between. Now that's very handy. The easiest way to do this is to start each solution with the momentum before equals the momentum after. So let's take another look at this car collision using momentum. We simply start off with the conservation of momentum and that is the momentum before equals the momentum after. Nice and simple. Now before the collision, let's look for any moving masses. We have the car 1 here, so let's include that in our equation as 
M1, V1. Now, car 2 is also moving, so we have to include that in the before, and that would be M2, V2. After the collision, the cars, in this case, are crunched together, and we call this an inelastic collision. That is, they don't bounce off each other. So, on the right-hand side of the equation, after the collision, we have the momentum of the total mass. That is, both cars stuck together as one mass. And so we can call that m1 and m2 together for the mass. And for the velocity, let's just call it v3. That's it. If we're looking for the velocity of the wreck after the crash, we could rearrange to solve for our v3 and take a look at it like this. See, pretty easy, eh? Without momentum, we'd have to try and determine the forces involved and determine how those forces would accelerate each mass. And then we would have to involve kinematics to determine the resulting velocities, and it would turn into quite the ordeal, assuming we could even get all the information about the forces involved in the crash. Momentum makes this pretty easy. Now, what if the cars didn't crunch themselves together? So let's take a look at it in a different way. What if we had something where there was less crunching involved and the masses actually bounced off each other, like pool balls colliding? We'd call this a more elastic collision, less bending and combining involved, and they bounce off each other instead. So again, P before equals P after. So before the collision, we have both balls moving, and so M1, V1, and M2, V2. And after the collision, we would have them moving as well. Um, let's call this M1, V1 prime to say after the collision, and M2, V2 prime. Now, depending on what information we were given about the balls, we may be rearranging this equation different ways. But let's say we were solving for the velocity of ball 2 after the collision. So we would just rearrange it like this. But again, it all comes down to the momentum before the collision equals the momentum after. Whether it's an elastic collision or an inelastic collision or anything in between. So we've had a quick look at a couple of collision situation examples. Let's consider an explosion example. Remember, momentum is very handy for both collisions and explosions and their analysis. So here's an example. A cannon shooting a cannonball. The explosion is the actual shooting of the cannonball and the separation of these masses, the cannon and the cannonball itself. To analyze this, we'd have the exact same starting point. So P before equals P after conservation of momentum. Looking at the momentum before, hmm, we'd be looking at the combined masses of the cannon and the cannonball together, but they're not moving. Nothing is moving before the explosion. The velocity is zero. Thus, the momentum before the explosion has to be zero. This might seem strange at this point, but let's continue. So on the right-hand side, that is after the explosion, let's see what we have here. For the cannon, let's call it MCVC, the C for cannon, and MBVB for the ball. Now, there's lots of velocity happening after the explosion. The ball is traveling at a high speed to the right here, and the cannon itself is recoiling by moving a little to the left. So, how is this going to equal zero? Well, remember that velocity is a vector quantity. That is, the direction must be considered. Thus, the momentum of the ball going to the right is going to equal the momentum of the cannon going left. And because they're going in opposite directions, they're going to cancel each other out to become zero on the right. And so, in fact, the Momentum before being zero is going to equal the momentum after total equals zero. So if we're going to determine, let's say, the velocity of the cannon during the recoil, we could rearrange the equation 
to solve for VC, like this. Now, if you want to have less recoil, maybe less chance of injury during the shooting, you may want to increase the mass of the cannon, which would decrease VC. Otherwise, the bigger the cannonball and the faster you shoot it, the bigger the recoil. And that's why higher caliber guns have bigger kicks. They are shooting larger masses, sometimes at larger speeds. In this tutorial, you were introduced to the idea of momentum. You found that although it is based on the same principles as Newton's laws, it's particularly convenient for analyzing explosions and collisions. Without having to delve into the details of the forces involved in the collision or explosion, we can quickly determine the changes in velocity for each mass as a result of the interaction of that collision or explosion. The conservation of momentum is therefore a really powerful tool to make things easy in the analysis during explosions and collisions.